I'm thrilled to welcome our first guest and featured artist, Shawnee. She's making her mark using music as medicine with her big soul voice and empowering message. Her voice is unique, dynamic, captivating. All the while, it holds a level of depth and undeniable soul. Billboard named her as one of the artists you should know, and MTV put her on their list of top gender-bending artists. As a two-spirit person in music, she is fearlessly authentic in her artistry. She is an outspoken advocate for Indigenous and queer communities. Working alongside the We Matter campaign and Kids Help Phone, she uses her passion for music to heal and inspire hope. We're so excited to welcome her to the show. Welcome, Shawnee. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me. We're going to dive right in um, and just really figure out uh, a bit more about you. I want to talk a bit about creativity. Uh, how creative have you been during this past while? Certainly back in the summertime when things kind of shifted in the world and, um, uh, you know, the pandemic sort of started to arise. I, um, as all musicians, my life looked very, uh, I set out for a different summer and a different um, year, but um, the direction changed and I had to change my perception and concept with that of what it was gonna look like for the rest of the year. And the best way to um, sort of embrace the change was to create and to get back to um, time spent with myself. Uh, you hear a lot of artists saying that, but it's very much true. Um, you know, it's it comes with hardship, the, the change, you know, we're not on tour, we're not performing live. And, and that's such a massive part of what I love about being a musician. And um, so that's difficult, but taking that out with music. So, you know, with this pandemic um, and COVID, uh, I'm wondering what steps have you taken uh, within your work to transition into the digital world? Uh, you mentioned no longer being face-to-face -face or going on tour. What does uh, your artistic process look like now? It has taken a while to sort of embrace the new way of being an artist and performing and and being in front of, uh, you know, a camera or technology, a phone, a computer. Um, but for me, I've really, um, you know, acknowledged and embraced that it's behind the camera and behind the technology. There are still ears and eyes listening that need that medicine and need that music and they need um, that artistry. So to be able to, you know, even though performing is very much different and sharing artistry is very much different, acknowledging that, um, you know, there's, it, it's not about what I'm seeing and that interaction that I'm used to. It's uh, what's behind it that I can't see and, and having that organic experience with the, uh, you know, a musician beside me and just enjoying um, uh, the performance in a different way. I really uh, enjoy that. It's definitely a new space that we all have to navigate and, uh, you know, got to watch out for online trolls, got to watch out for internet connections. But I also want to focus on what your creative process looks like. Um, you spoke a bit about being able to be really introspective and work within yourself. Um, I personally write in seasons, and this season has been a really interesting one. What sort of questions have you been asking yourself during this time, and how does that reflect in your lyrics or in your performance? I feel like I've gone through so much transition in my life, and in this past year, I have changed and grown so much, and that's come with a lot of hard questions and staring at myself and like looking back at myself and and um i hold myself responsible as an artist to be authentic and so that means i have to challenge myself um and during this time with myself uh really using that vulnerability and that time to reflect on where am i where am i going what do i want to say how do how do i say it it's it's, it's it's very vulnerable to share those pieces of you 
um, that, you know, it's like sharing your diary. You'd write in a diary entry. You normally you close that up, you put that under the bed and you probably, you know, you, you wouldn't go back over it, but to share that, um, I really challenge myself to be the most vulnerable I can be at this time in my life. And, you know, I've gotten back into studio and writing those songs and saying those lyrics, coming out with those lyrics that uh, are the most precious to me. I will forever challenge myself to sort of go deeper, dive deeper into that as an artist. I hope to just grow in that way. It's really interesting um, that you talk about that because I feel like during this time, a lot of people are finding out a lot of things about themselves. Uh, for instance, I found out that um, I need fresh air, uh, that uh, the things that I've taken for granted, what are you learning about yourself uh, during these unprecedented times? Honestly, sometimes I feel like somebody spun me around 50 times. I keep saying this the past couple of days, I've been saying it. I feel like somebody spun me around 50 times and then blindfolded me and then kind of like gave me a push and was like, okay, now go experience life. Really feel safe within myself to do that. And that's required a lot of self sort of, uh, you know, I've had to really, really look at myself and ask myself some really tough questions and go through some hard things this past year and make changes in my life. And and um and then create create with all that change and, and inspiration you know it sounds like such a uh, intense process but i know you know based on your work and based on the wide appeal of your work and the number of fans that you have around the world i'm sure that they're appreciative of uh the process that you're going through the excavation of your feelings and ideas uh on, into your music. What do you hope for the art sector uh, to look like in the future? What kind of leadership uh, can we take in conversation with the art sector uh, to really move forward artists and their work during these times? I have walked, I made a few mistakes in my career with focusing on the things in the beginning of my career, focusing on the things I don't have control over. I don't have control over who listens to my music. I don't have control over who likes it. I don't have control over where it's going to go, how big it's going to be. But the things I have control over is holding myself accountable for who I am and expressing that and sharing that. And my goal is forever to walk through my personal life and my artistic life and and share that with people and encourage other people to do the same. Music has been such a powerful tool for me and it's been a medicine for me in my life. And to be able to share that and express that, I feel honored and I feel lucky and I feel grateful. And so I hope that in the future that other people and other artists and whatever they, you know, and what whatever you're doing artistically, you can uh, feel the freedom to be who you are, whoever, however that might be. You know, there was a time that being a two-spirit person um, uh, was not okay. And in, in, in some circumstances today still is not okay. There are, are spaces where you're not, you don't feel safe to be who you are. And I remember there was a time where it was not okay to be out as an artist for me. It was not okay in the industry and I was recommended not to. And so it's my hope that, uh, you know, you can feel safe as an artist to express yourself. And if you don't feel safe, I encourage you um, to never apologize for who you are. It, you don't need to be accepted. You do not need to be accepted if you're living in love and if you're living your truth. That's enough. And there's a community and a world out there that's going to ce celebrate who you are. You mentioned... Um a great deal about authentic self. And I'm wondering if you can give some best, best practices or advice to uh, young emerging artists about how they can find their authentic self and produce authentic messages during this digital community space. I think as an artist that it's less about finding yourself and more about embracing yourself. I feel that in my journey, it's been about, um, I, I, my spirit knows who I am. I, I don't need to find that in the world. 
um, it's all about embracing it. You know, the struggles in my life, the things that have made me who I am, the things that make us who we are, the good, the bad, the hard, the struggle, all of it um, forms who we are in here and here and in the spirit. And so to embrace that as an artist and share that so that it impacts you and it empowers you and as well as, as who's experiencing your art. So I would say that it's all about just embracing exactly who you are and everything that's made you who you are. I second, third, fourth, fifth agree. Uh, really great advice. When we're thinking about um, this new way of performance, this new way of interacting, this new way of being an artist, what digital platforms, what technical specs do you recommend artists use to showcase? What has been working for you? I would say, um, you know, even if it's just jamming with some friends and posting it, posting it on any social platform. And um, I think it's, there's so many things you can do now to um, share who you are online um, and, and just like have fun, have fun with it and, and, and try not to think of, so much about um what's supposed to happen with your art and just let it breathe and let it have air and be real mm, mm, mm. in poetry land well we snap when we hear something that we like and I, I i've been snapping inside my heart all interview uh Lastly, we have a, a, a great audience of young, aspiring, emerging artists, different genres, different uh, artistic fields. If you want them to take away one thing from the, this discussion, what would it be? I honestly believe that as a young person, the power that young people have, I remember struggling as a young person. And I remember saying, you know, I'm going to be a singer. I'm, I'm going to and I was laughed at, you know, I came from a small town and I was laughed at because it's not realistic. It's not, you know, it's a pipe dream. It's, and what I've come to learn uh, is that it's not a pipe dream to be, it's a privilege to, to be an artist. And you have a responsibility because that's your gift. So it doesn't matter. We, like I said, we don't have control over what the future holds for us, but nobody can stop you from being an artist. So uh, there's a business side of also uh, music and get to know get to know your business well because you're in control of that. And I very much learned that. Um, you know, the music industry has very much changed from when I started to now. Get to know your business if you want to have a career and that's your goal create and get to know what it takes to be a, a self business, uh, um, you know, creator. I'm snapping all over the place. Thank you so much, Shawnee, for your authenticity, your uh, ideas, your inspiration, your vulnerable reflections, but we're not done just yet. I understand you have a special performance that you'd like to share with us. Here to perform an exclusive preview, world premiere of her soon to be released song, Face the Music, Shawnee. You've done bad and I've done worse. Counting out my options, you don't put me first. You left me standing and I had no choice Screaming, barely breathing, you don't hear my voice They don't know the half of it I gave to make it work Filling up the silence is a pain that made it hurt They don't know the half of it, the wrongs I couldn't right Sitting, waiting, chasing I have to 
lit up on fire You took the keys and left me locked inside I busted out the window, guess I'm the bad guy I have to face the music. 